Knowing how to assign numbers and characters to variables and then manipulate their values is extremely important in programming. But before discussing variables, let's talk about data types and literals first. A data type, sometimes simply known as just a type, tells the compiler how to use a particular piece of data. For example, is it a number? And if so, what kind of number is it? In C, there are only three fundamental data types, but you will also see void as a type, and it means nothing or no type. It's usually used when defining functions like our setup and loop in Arduino, and it indicates that the function returns no value. Sometimes you'll see void listed as a parameter or input to a function, and it means that the function accepts no inputs. The first fundamental type, integer, is abbreviated int, and it indicates that the data can be negative or positive integers, and zero. On basic Arduinos, like the Uno and Redboard, the int type takes up two bytes in memory and can be a number between negative 32,768 to 32,767. Then there's the floating point type, which is abbreviated as float. Floating point means that the decimal point can move around in the four byte number that makes up a float. You can represent a float as a decimal number, like 2.718, or in scientific notation, like 6.022E23, where the number after the E is the exponent. So this would be 6.022 times 10 raised to the 23rd power. Floating point numbers can be between about 3.4 times 10 to the 38 and negative 3.4 times 10 to the 38. Finally, we have the character type, which is a one-byte integer that corresponds to an English letter, number, or symbol. In C, the character type is abbreviated to its first four letters and is often pronounced care or char. Because it's only one byte, there can only be 256 possible characters, and Arduino uses the American Standard Code for Information Interchange, otherwise known as ASCII. ASCII was created in the 1960s and used on teletype machines. Here is a table showing how the characters are stored in ASCII format. For example, the number 117 corresponds to lowercase u, and 46 is a period. While you don't need to memorize this table, it can be useful to know which values mean which characters when printing information. While there are only three fundamental types in C, keywords can be used to change how the types work. Here is a table showing some of these types and what they mean in Arduino. Note that some of the data types can take up more bytes than what's listed, depending on the platform you're using. For example, int only takes up two bytes on the Arduino Uno and Redboard, but takes up four bytes on 32-bit systems like the Douay and SAMD-based boards. For now, we'll assume that we're using an Arduino, Uno, or Redboard. To see how we can modify the data types, let's take a look at an example. We could use the long int type, which changes the amount of memory used to store an integer from two bytes to four bytes, meaning we can now store integers from around negative 2 billion to around positive 2 billion. You'll sometimes see long int written as just long. They mean the same thing. You can also use the keyword unsigned to force characters and integers to be positive only. So an unsigned long can be zero to around positive 4 billion. On some systems, double is a floating point number that takes up twice as much memory as a float. However, on our Uno and Redboard, a double is essentially the same as a float. There are two ways to use data types. One is as a literal and the other is in variables. Let's look at our Blink example again. We can see two literals in effect here, 13 and 500. A literal is a fixed value that does not change throughout the program. We can use other literals as the argument to delay. We just need to change 500 to 3.14 to be a float, or change it to open single quotes, lowercase s, close single quotes, to be a char. This might not be the best idea as delay expects an integer as an argument. What if we wanted a value to change throughout the program? Well, we could use a variable. A variable is a type of container used to store data. In C, we have to give each variable a name known as an identifier and a data type. For example, let's say that I've got two variables with the identifiers A and B, where A is a float and B is a char. I can't store a character like T 
in A, but I can store it in B. Likewise, I can't store a floating point number like 3.14 in B, but I can store it in A. Now, when I use the identifier in my code, the variable gives me whatever I stored in it. Keep in mind that I can only store one piece of data in each variable at a time. Let's see how to use variables. Back in Blink, you can see that we had to write 13 three different times. We can make this code easier to maintain by using a variable. At the top of the code, outside setup and loop, write int space LED. This tells the compiler we want to reserve a section of memory to store an integer. By writing it outside of setup and loop, we've created a global variable, which means that it can be accessed and changed from anywhere in the program. We then want to assign a value to our variable, so write equals 13 semicolon. We can now replace all other instances of the number 13 in our program with LED. This new program will run the same as before, and it has the added benefit of letting us change one number instead of three to switch which pin we want to use. You can also change values in variables later in the program. For example, at the end of our code and loop, add LED equals five semicolon. After running through the loop once, which causes our LED to blink once, the pin number is then changed to five. So the next time through the loop, digital write will attempt to write to pin five and our LED will stop blinking. To prevent someone from accidentally changing a variable value, we can make it constant by adding the keyword const in front of the data type in our variable declaration. So we now have const int LED equals 13. This has the effect of making the variable read only by our program. If you try to compile this, you would get an error since we tried to change LED later in the code. This can also potentially save some memory as many compilers will replace const labeled variables with a value from program space rather than using precious memory, which we only have two kilobytes of on the Arduino Uno and Redboard. Let's also see how to print variables to the console. This is extremely handy when it comes to debugging your program. Start a new Arduino sketch and at the top, write char A equals single quotation, capital S, single quotation, semicolon, followed by int B equals 76, semicolon. In setup, write serial.begin, open parentheses, 9600, close parentheses, semicolon. This will initialize a serial port connection to our computer. Then in loop, write serial.print, open parentheses, a, close parentheses, semicolon, and serial.println, open parentheses, b, close parentheses, semicolon, followed by delay 1000. Serial print a prints the value of a in our serial monitor, and serial print ln b prints b followed by a new line. ln in print ln stands for line and is similar to pressing enter or return on your keyboard after something has been printed. Upload your program and then press the serial monitor button to open a terminal. You should see S76 being printed every second, each on a new line. This should give you an idea of how to use data types, literals, and variables in Arduino. There are other data types we can use and we'll cover those as we see them.